Welcome to Olds Mob 455. We're back with American Motors 401. After all the other modifications have been opened up or clearanced, first of all you have to start off with a decent timing cover. If it's too worn out, it's junk. But this seems to be in good enough shape. The last point of blueprinting this is the end play of these gears. He's already used lapping compound and got rid of all the marks on here where the gears and garbage that's going through the oil makes grooves and then you'd have oil leakage at the bottom of the gears. At this point we're going to be using plastic gauge, put a brand new gasket in here, tighten it down to seven foot pounds and check the thickness of the plastic gauge if it seems to be too big, then we'll have to lap this down and then check again. Do it in small increments. If it gets too tight, you'd bind up on these gears and it would just be, it would just wear everything out, you know. It's, you've got to have your clearances, but you don't want to have excessive clearance where the oil just jumps from one side to the other. So we want to keep it nice and tight in between here so that the oil is forced out and has to go through the oil passages. You can see as this little fine strips of plastic gauge, if you've never used plastic gauge, you can see you buy it in these sheets like this and it goes from 02 to 006. So when we end up tightening this down, if these little strips of plastic get squished out, then you match it up to there and it'll tell you the thicknesses on here. It's when you don't have different ways of miking stuff up or depth. You could be measuring this stuff with a depth gauge, measure the thickness of this with a micrometer, add it all up. This is a quickie way to do it. So we had 005 over in this corner. Let's go over in this far corner. The same 006. After checking it out with the plastic gauge, he figured out that he had five thousandths and six thousandths. So you can see this and there's machining marks. We have enough room where we can polish this out, get rid of all these scratches, and probably still be within a two thousandths minimum that we want to do. We're going to be talking about how you can get the surface flat enough to end up improving a machine part that's already supposed to be flat but it has grooves and you know you can't do it on a workbench you need something that's going to be true is plate glass. The owner here used lapping compound. There's an abrasive in this paste. You can also use emery cloth and tape the whole thing down. And you wanna, you don't wanna be leaning it and hogging away on one side. You gotta keep on rotating it. Try to keep the, your pressure on it as even as possible so you maintain that true surface. But the glass that's being used is called plate glass. And that he got this off of a guy on the internet also that recommended going to a hardware store and they can take a piece of broken glass and just get a section and you can get this really cheap. Don't try to use other types of glass, especially car, automotive glass, he says is tempered. If you bump it or put pressure on it when it's not on an even surface, it'll shatter into a bunch of pieces. This is plate glass, he says it's more durable, or he said you can use an old mirror. If you see this, you see how the, the lapping compound itself is wearing into the glass, you know, it's etching it, and it's actually taking some material away. So the owner here would suggest probably that you use the emery cloth, and, you know, to keep it more true. 
Okay, we got the glass down. We went to the, the fresh side. Laying down this emery cloth. And it's suggested, we're just following directions just like you would be doing. I'm going in a circular pattern. Just grabbing it from different positions too, so you won't favor one side or another. Maybe hang on up here. And then you just work away at it. It's going to take time. I'm thinking this is a machining dot. And this has a dot also, so I'm thinking the two of them must be maybe lapped in at that point. So I'm putting that dot to the center. It was suggested that two thousandths to six thousandths would be nice, but keeping it down on two would be better. Do you want to waste the time leveling this thing off? Depends how critical you want to get. How much time you want to put into it to get your perfection. If you had a shop that worked on American Motors all the time, I'm sure they're privy to this, but we just measured these and the gaskets themselves are different thicknesses. Now, when I work on my Harley, there are all different types of gas gaskets for a Harley that you can change your oil you know, clearances on the pump and I have like a thin cellophane foil on mine and you can see some guys that just due to the manufacturing tolerances their gears might even be sticking out beyond the case and they would need a thicker gasket just to so they don't bind up the gears so before you get into a project and worrying about sanding thing for clearances, you might just be able to buy a thinner gasket and take care of the whole situation with just changing this. So now that uh, we've closened up these tolerances a little bit, we're supposed to double check this, and I'm kind of putting pressure down on, like it's being held by the little clamp. I'm turning this and the gears spin freely. There's going to be oil in there. Right now it's dry. But nothing's holding me back. I'm just real easy. The gears are spinning good. Well, this whole situation with all these modifications is for a street car. Okay? Now, you could eliminate all this work of clearing out these passages and everything by just running some external oil lines that would really smooth the path out and go down from the sump then you'd have this external braided line and come right into the side of this pump the only problem is whenever you got something external especially under pressure if you blew that oil line let's say if the headers were too close or just wear and tear you blow that oil line now you got your oil going all over the place and maybe during the process like if this engine was in a Jeep or we're going to be putting in a Javelin driving on a, a track and stuff's going on you're not paying attention all of a sudden your oil pressure is down. You'd know really fast if there's oil all over your tires and spinning out at high speed, very dangerous. So just for a street car He's not going to end up going with these external oil lines. This is probably overkill already. But if you wanted the best, external oil lines would really ease up a lot of all this extra work that he's done. So after seeing somebody doing all these modifications, and it takes considerable amount of time, uh, if you have a small block Chevy or a small block Ford that you know, doesn't have any oiling problems, you won't understand. But if you've ever had a car that, um, like a Buick or any other kind of um, engine that has 
your oil pump or filter out in front like this and it's taking all these 90 degree turns and stuff and you've spun a bearing then after spending all that money and time of working on the engine you can realize why guys would want to go to this length of work to avoid ever going through that hassle again it's it's a crummy feeling when you spent a whole lot of money on parts and you end up being in the middle of a race or at a track and you've traveled all that distance to get there and you want to enjoy racing the car and all of a sudden you have an engine failure and then you'll understand why somebody would go through all this work and make sure that they're getting the best possible oiling that they can have.